Question four, given the matrix B equals, we had a two by two matrix there, calculate the determinant of P. So we write determinant of P, symbolically that's all we write, the determinant of P, multiply five times four minus two times negative three. So we're multiplying these elements, that's five times four, call these the elements of the leading diagonal, we also multiply the elements of the non-leading diagonal, 2 times negative 3. Of course, we subtract them. So we get 20 minus negative 6. And subtract the negative, that's positive. So we have 2 plus 6. And that gives us 26. Now to find the inverse of the matrix P, the inverse of this matrix here, we know that we have to have 1 divided by the determinant. We found the determinant of 26. So it's 1 divided by the determinant times the adjoint matrix. Now the adjoint matrix is found by switching the elements of the leading diagonal. So four goes here and five goes here. We make that switch. And then we're gonna take these two elements, multiply them by negative one. We do not switch them, do not switch them. We just multiply them by negative one. So the two becomes a negative two and a negative three becomes a positive three after being multiplied by negative one. So the signs really change when we multiply by negative one. And that's the way we do it all the time. All right, always switch these, always change the signs of these, but keep them in their position, do not switch. And of course, we outside we have to have one divided by the determinant. So we can leave it like that, or we can actually convert it to one matrix without the scalar outside. So we're gonna take one, 20, one over 26 multiplied by four, which is gonna give us, let's divide by two, get 13, divide by two, get two. And so we end up with two over 13. Do the same for the negative two, which gives us one, negative one over 13. Do the same thing with the three, gives us three over 26. And this one gives us five over 26. That's multiplying all the elements of the matrix by one over 26. Okay, so next we turn our, our attention to part C. And for part C, we have two equations. And they're asking us to find the point of intersection of the straight tracks. So all they're asking us is to solve the pair of simultaneous equations. And once we solve the pair of simultaneous equations, we get an x value and a y value. And the x value and y value are coordinate pairs, in fact, location of a point. And so when two straight lines meet, of course, they cross at a point. And that's the point we're looking at. What is the x value? What is the y value of that point? All right, so let's move on. So we're gonna rewrite the matrix equation. We're gonna write the matrix equation from the two simultaneous equations. And so the first matrix is gonna be the matrix with the coefficients in it. So the coefficient of five x is five. That's the number that multiplies the x. The coefficient of positive 2y is 2. 2 multiplies y. Negative 3 multiplies x, so we're looking at negative 3 for the coefficient. And 4 goes here. And we take the x and y variables. The only pair of variables that we have in the equation is x and y. And the constants, after the equal sign, those numbers are 16 and negative 7. Those go in there. So the, notice that we have the matrix in the form of what we call the matrix equation, ax equals b, where a is this matrix, x is this matrix, and b is this matrix. Now, we want to make the variable matrix x to be on the left-hand side, so we're going to transpose the a matrix to the other side, and it becomes a inverse. We pull back the b matrix. So the x matrix stays, the b matrix stays, but the a matrix goes over as the inverse. Now, so we need to write this. Let's write back the, the variable matrix x. So the variable matrix x would be the matrix with x and y equals a inverse. Now where's a inverse? Well, we work out a inverse already. Let's use this and stuff this one. One over 26 times the adjoint, negative two, three and five. So this is a inverse, all right? Now how do we know that this is a inverse? You might be a little confused. Okay, so what happened if you look at this, five, two, negative three and four, that this A matrix is really matrix P that was given earlier. 
in part A. So that's the same matrix. So C is part of question four. So typically that's what they do. All right, so they give you the matrix, the two by two matrix. And when they give you the simultaneous equation, you realize, wait, I had this matrix before. The same matrix, A matrix here is what we have here, same components or elements. And so therefore, if you ask to find the inverse of this, you already found it already here. So we can just write it back as A inverse. So matrix B is really matrix A in terms of the formula AX equal B. So when we transpose A, the A matrix, it becomes A inverse. And this is really the A matrix or matrix P. When transposed, well, when reformatted um, to inverse of P, it becomes one over the determinant times the adjoint, which is what we have here. Then we multiply by the B matrix, which is going to be the matrix with 16 and negative 17 as components. Hopefully that was clear. So again, this is the A matrix, which is really matrix P, transposed as the inverse, and we already found the inverse. Next, we're going to multiply row by columns. So put back in 1 over 26. This row, let's call it row 1, multiplies column, the column that we have there of the next matrix. So 4 times 16, that gives us, um, 4 times 16 gives us 64. And first by first, added to second by second. So that's negative 2 times negative 7. It was 14 and that total is 78 so we have 78 here and then we're gonna find this row multiply this row by this column now the first entry is 3 of the row first entry is 16 of the column so 3 times 16 that gives us 48 added to the second entry times the second entry 5 7 is 35 but it's actually 5 times negative 7 so that's negative 35 adding these two values here adding them we recognize there are different signs so we subtract and that's gonna give us negative well, not negative, but it's going to subtract and we're going to get uh, 13. And we keep the sign of the 48, which is positive. So that's positive 30. Okay, so now we're left to the final stages. Um, finding 126 of 78. So 1 over 26 times 78. 26 goes itself once into 78 goes 3 times. I mean, you can check with your calculator. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. So that's going to give us... All right, so writing back this, 126 of 78 is 3. We now need to find 126 of the next number in the matrix, which is 13. So 1 over 26 times 13. 13 itself goes once. 13 and 26 goes twice. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 2. So we're left. And so we can now recognize that we have equal matrices, which means that when two matrices are equal, corresponding entries are equal. So x is equal to 3 and y is equal to a half. What it means is that when the two matrices, when the two straight lines cross each other, they cross at this point. So let's say x is 3, so let's say we have 3 here, and we have half on the y-axis, probably a different scale, let's call it half, all right? The two straight line will actually cross at this point, x equal to 3 and y equals, this is the y value, this is our x value. So the two straight line cross at this point, x equal 3, y equal a half. And so you'll have one straight line that passes through this point, and another that passes through this point, all right? And so these are the two solutions, okay? Now, of course, we could go further and show you exactly why is this the case. That will take some time. Let's look at the first equation, which is 5x plus 2y equals 16. What we can do, we can rewrite this equation in a form we call y equal mx plus c, where m here tells you how the graph is sloping. Is it upwards or downwards? And this tells you where the graph cuts the y-axis. Like, for instance, we can see that this graph cuts the y-axis at a positive number. In other words, above zero. So it's a positive number here. And this graph cuts the y-axis at a negative number. Mind you, it probably could cut it even at a positive number as well. Like, if it was sloping this way. Still same direction in terms of upwards. So this could be, this is possibly um, not a, a negative number cutting it right here. But we could double check. Let's, let's stick with the first equation quickly. So we're going to make it um, in the form y equal mx plus c, which means we need, a y, we need a y only on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So we're going to transpose the 5x over. So that's going to give us 2y equals the 5x goes over to the right of the equal sign as negative 5x. The 16 remain on that side, which is going to be positive 16, still to the right of the equal sign, so we can keep the sign. Next, we're going to divide by 2 for every term in the equations. Give us y equals negative 5 halves x 
plus 8, all right? So here we're seeing y equals, one second, y equals negative 5 halves, okay? Because remember this, uh, 5 went over, 5x went over is negative 5x. We divide by 2, so it's negative 5x plus 8. And so this graph here, this line produced by this equation, the line produced by this equation, which is the same equation that we have here, just transformed, uh, cuts the y-axis at 8, positive 8. Remember what I said to you before, the c value here is where the graph cuts the y-axis. It's a constant, and that constant is 8 in this case. Okay, so I need a little space, so let me just write it here. y equals mx plus c. The equation we have is y equals negative 5 half x plus 8, just to illustrate better. And notice that c is actually um, c is actually 8. So where the graph cuts the y-axis at 8. So which one of these cut the y-axis at 8? I will like to cut the y-axis at 8. It has to be this one, right? So here, we can say that we have 8 here. So obviously this graph here, this graph of the straight line, is the equation 5x plus 2y equals 16, which when written in the form of y equal mx plus c is y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 8. So this graph here of this line cuts the y-axis at positive 8. And we can see that it does too. But it's, it's, notice that it actually slopes downwards. And how, you know, how can we tell that it would have sloped downwards? Well, looking at the form y equal mx plus c here, over here, let's look at this number before the x. Remember, this is our m value. It tells us how the graph is sloping. And m is really negative 5 halves. Once m is negative, the graph will slope downwards from left to right. And m is a negative number. Once it's a negative number, the graph will slope downwards from left to right. And so this graph slopes downwards. And so it is this graph, the y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 8, which is the same as this one, right? Remember, we transpose this same equation here into the form y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 8. So we can see it will slope downwards because the gradient is actually what? The gradient of it is actually a negative number. So we're looking at the second equation, negative 3x plus 4y equal negative 7. I transpose the x term over, so that leaves me with a positive 4y equal, the negative 3x goes over as positive 3x, and the, equal, the negative 7 that comes after the equal sign remains as negative 7 after the equal sign, because we did not transpose it. We only transpose the negative 3x from the left to the right us on side of the equal sign. I want to make y the subject. Remember, we want it in the form of y equal mx plus c. So I need to get 1y here. So we divide by 4 to make it 1y. 1 times y is simply y. But we have to divide each of these terms by the same number to keep the equation balanced. So this equation is 3 quarter x minus, let's write it as a mixed number because we have a top number that's more than the bottom number. We call it an improper fraction, which can be converted to a mixed number. 4 goes into 7 once. A remainder of 3 it goes on top, and but the 4 the denominator underneath. All right, so we have, let's take this off over here, so we already get the gist with, with this um, other equation. So recognizing we, have, we wanted the equation in the form of y equal mx plus c. And the equation, this equation, the second equation here, what we, wrote, we wrote it in the form y equals 3 over 4x minus 1 and 3 quarters. Notice that the number before x is what we call the gradient, which tells us how the line is sloping. And if you look at it, the number before x is a positive number. And so m being a positive number in that it's 3 over 4, it means the graph will slope upwards from left to right because it's positive. From left to right, the graph slopes upwards. And so this is a graph we're looking at. So this graph slopes upwards, all right? And so this graph has the equation 3x plus 4y equals negative 7, all right? But let's see where it cuts the y-axis to see how accurate that was drawn. All right, so it cuts the y-axis. Notice that c, the c value, positive c, is actually negative 1 and 3 quarters. Positive c is negative 1 and 3 quarters, which means that negative 1 and 3 quarters actually fall below the y value of 0, below the origin, in other words. So it will actually be somewhere down here. So this value where the graph cuts the y-axis is negative 1 and 3 quarters. Okay, so this equation, again, that we have here, is the same equation, which is y equals 3 quarter x minus 1 and 3 quarters. 
And so we have the two equation and two equations and we drew the lines that represent them. So hopefully that was clear for you. All right. Oh, let me just, before I even go any further, this point of intersection again, therefore of these two graphs, right, represented by the equation 5x plus 2y plus 16, and it should be negative. Negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 7. It is like at x equal 3 and y equal half.